Hello everybody, this is Professor Triplett, and we are going to start polymodeling. Yay! Alright, what does that mean? Up until now, we've used curves to make polygons, we've used uh, deformers to deform polygons, but we haven't really gotten into uh, polymodeling too much, uh, maybe a few little snippets of it, but let me explain a few things about it. So we have what we would call an object level. And that's when you just select the whole object, you'll see it turns green. And this is basically um, its own entity, if you will. And that's basically like just the box and it's named top one. Okay, so that's an object. But if I right click and just keep holding my right click and I drag to like edge, so I just drag up to edge and select this, I can actually select an edge and I can move that. So now we've essentially really change the shape of this polygon just by one little single movement. Okay, we can also right click and hold and grab a vertex and we can move a vertex. Now these are called components. The vertices, the edges, the faces, these are all called components. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to work a little bit with components but we're going to actually go over the mesh menu and I just want to show the tools that are important in the mesh menu and tell you which tools I don't want you using in the mesh menu. So let's get started. Okay, uh, the mesh menu is right here. So all we have to do is just click on the top bar here so we can make it float and we can take a look. And the first thing in the menu, the Booleans, you are not allowed to use. In my class, uh, I don't want anybody uh, relying on Booleans to model. It's not like they're terrible or bad, but uh, when you're a beginner, you should know how to model without Booleans. So uh, when you're more experienced and you know how to clean up after Booleans, because uh, Booleans kind of leave some messy stuff sometimes, uh, then I have no problem. But for now, you are not allowed to use Booleans. If I see it used in my class, you will be chastised. <laughs> Sorry, but I got to do what I got to do. Okay. So we talked about these are models, right? And we have one, mo one model here. And if I hold Control and Shift, I can select another model here. Well, sometimes we might want to just combine these two together. Um, and that's what this combine button does. It does not combine them on the uh, component level. It only combines them on the object level. So if I hit combine, these all become one and it looks like they're one piece. But if you were actually to go to the faces here, let me just double click here. So you can see if I double click on these faces, uh, it selects everything within the island of that face. But it's, you can see it's not really selecting these other polygons here. So if I double click on there, same thing, it selects all of these that are connected, but not these, because even though they're they're the same um, the same object, they're considered kind of the same object, they're not technically like welded together. There's no verts or edges being shared. Okay, so um, that's just what the combine does. Now the uh, separate is kind of the antithesis of that. So anything that's its own island, if you hit separate, boom, it'll separate them out. And so now these are back to being separate pieces. Although we lost the names of them, their original names are gone. It's just blown away. So, uh, and it's making all these crazy groups every time I do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's, um, that's basically what the combine and separate are. I use these sometimes, definitely the combine uh, more than the separate. <clears throat> You'll notice that in your, um, your uh, channel box, it actually is putting like this poly separate, poly unite. The poly unite is the combine and the poly separate is the separate. It's the MEL terminology for it. MEL stands for Maya's Embedded Language. Uh, so the next thing we're going to use is fill hole. Uh, sometimes you will have an object and let me just delete a face off. So I'm just selecting a face. You'll have this open edge here and I'm going to go to edges, double click on this. If you have an open edge, you can just double click on it and it'll select the open edge. And um, you can hit fill hole and that will fill it. Okay, so uh, that's an easy way to fill it, but one thing that you typically don't want to do, and I just show this just so you don't get the idea of using the fill hole in a strange way, you're not usually going to do something like this and grab all these edges and go fill hole. That's going to make some really bad geometry. Um, you know. So basically it's not, it's not a way to fix like this, you know, this sphere or something. So just letting you know that typically that's not what fill hole is used for. Uh, but you know, it is a way to add 
a face into open edges. Okay, reduce we won't use in this class. Smooth, I do want to explain smooth a little bit. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 3 on my keyboard and show you smooth preview. So smooth preview is, by hitting 3, a, it's turning your mesh into a subdivision surface. And it's showing you what this mesh would look like if a subdivision, Catmull Clark subdivision surface was applied to it. Now it's not locked in yet, so if I hit 1, it goes back to its original shape. The difference between um, the smooth preview and the actual smooth is that when you actually hit smooth, and looks like we're covered up here and we turn it to like one division, this is locked in now. So now that I've done this smooth like that, if I was to drop that tool, then we actually have that shape locked in and um, you're not going to get it back. So unless you just undo it like that. Okay, so. Um, there will be times where we use smooth, but it's not going to be the most common thing that we use in class. And I don't want people to smooth things just arbitrarily uh, because you kind of want to know what you're doing when you use it. Uh, we've used the triangulate before, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. So it's just going to triangulate stuff. Um, typically, I don't use these too often unless I have some kind of like if I'm modeling a rock and it's got some, you know, it's like a static object. It's never going to be, um, you know, like in motion or rigged or anything. Uh, sometimes, you know, triangulating end guns on it might be fine uh, it might not be a big deal um, but I try to stick with mostly all quads okay so uh, quadrangulate will reverse the process and take out triangles but I just just the a keynote is that triangulate uh, or quadrangulate does not fix every single triangle triangulation problem that you have so it just it doesn't work for everything just so you know um, this is the most important thing in here and it's going to take a few minutes for me to explain how this works. So I'm going to delete my history. Um, I am going to, uh, let's take a look at this object. Now I want you to note before I get started with the mirror, note where my pivot is. It's not in the center of the object, okay? And I'm doing this on purpose. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, cut tool here, and I'm just holding control so I can, uh, it adds an edge loop, and then I hold shift, and I can snap it to increments. And I'm just going to cut once. And while I'm at it, let's just cut it again. I'll cut it in the middle, going up and down too. So here's the thing. You don't, oops, what happened there? Face. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. This one. So um, a lot of times you only need to work on half of something if it's symmetrical, and then you mirror it over later. There's no reason to try to work on both sides. And in some cases, you might have something that's uh, not only symmetrical, but it can be knocked down into uh, quarters or even knocked down into eighths or stuff like that. So um, there's a lot of objects that can be handled that way. So you don't have to model everything uh, a thousand times. You just model it once and then you mirror it over. All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to turn the mirror on and show you what kind of stuff comes up. So uh, let's go ahead and just put the mirror on. And you can see that it kind of did what you would probably want in a normal case. Um, because I built this in the X, uh, or in the front view, the way that uh, I should, uh, it's mirroring by default in the X direction. So the red arrow is pointing in the X direction. And you can see right here in this little uh, dialog, the axis is in the X. Okay, me personally, I would have had this axis thing be the first setting on here. I'm not sure why they put it as, you know, the fourth one down. But uh, to me, that's the most important thing because um, I can go ahead and change this axis. I can say, Y. So I just clicked on the axis and drag, and uh, now it's mirroring in the Y direction. So uh, what you'll notice, though, is that it's using that pivot point that I first pointed out to be the place where it's mirroring um, from. So so it's taking that offset this is that that this polygon is from the uh, the pivot point and it's mirroring it down. Okay. Um, so typically, what I try to do is have my my pivot point set up in the right spot before I start mirroring. Um, so when it's because I have my axis position set to object, it's going to use the object's pivot point. If I set this as world, so you can just click on axis position set to world, you see, oh, it disappeared. Well, not really. It just went to where the world axis is. So now it's using, as you can see with the grid, you can see it's using this world axis to mirror. Uh, that would actually work in the X sense because the X is uh, correct. Uh, this thing still would want to be in the X, so that's correct. 
Uh, you can also do, there's also bounding box. Um, we don't really need to get into that too much right now, but uh, um, let's just go back to object. Let's go to Z. So you can see, you can mirror it since it's right here in the middle. You can mirror it in the Z and it's going back there. Okay, so what would we do in real world situation? All right, so let's go ahead and, you know what, hold off. Before I do that, let me explain a couple other things. All right, let's go back to X and then we'll go into real world. All right, so um, we have this thing called cut geometry. Let's just explain the rest of this. If the cut geometry is on, if I pull this arrow, you can see it will actually slice your geometry down. Okay, if it's off, watch what happens. It actually will overlap. You can see like it just overlaps. You can actually move through it. Okay, now check this out. Notice that little hop that's happening. Okay, that's because I've got this merge border on. If I turn this off, uh, let's see, you can do, well, let's see, which one's that doing? I think that's like bridge border or something. I can't, it doesn't even, let me see if we can expand this out for you. <laughs> oh, really? Why are you so goofy? Okay, uh, I'd probably have to go in the options box to see what the thing totally says. But um, if I go to, oh yeah, that is bridge border. Okay, so if I go to um, do not merge, then no matter what, it doesn't merge. If you go to bridge border, it will put a bridge between it. But you can see here, this is a problem if you go into it like that. But we tip, I typically don't use this like that, so I'm not, it doesn't even matter. Um, but typically I have this on a uh, merge border like this. And um, you can tell that at some point it stops merging and that's based on this merge threshold. So if this was like 50, something really ridiculous, it's still going to merge, and it's still going to merge, and it's still going to merge until you get past a certain point, and then it's going, oh, nope, we can't merge anymore. Okay, so, um, but I don't use this like this, really. So let's get into the real world use of this, and then I'll let you guys go about your life. Okay, so the real world use. All right, let's just go ahead and drop the tool. I'm going to delete this face, these faces here. Delete. We'll, it's basically starting over. We're going to just start all over. All right, so typically, I, if you're going to do something where you're working on halves, you're going to have your pivot right in the middle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to center pivot. And we can't see that I just center pivot because my, uh, my move tool is off. But you can see now I just center pivot. And so if we look from the top view, you can see the pivot's right in the center here. Okay, I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. And I'm going to start dragging. Well, I'm going to hold V first, and then I'm going to start dragging towards the edge here. Okay, you can see right there. All right, so now I am in the dead center of what I want the object to be mirrored of. All right, so here's why this is good. Because even if I have quarter, if I have quarters here instead of just halves, I could take this and I can go ahead and go mirror. All right, so you can see it mirrored it over. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Q just to drop my tool. And then I'm going to hit mirror again. And this time I'm going to go in the Y direction. Okay, now I was, I'm was i glad this happened. Um, this is a bug that's in Maya. So let me just undo this. Okay. If you get something like that, it should have worked properly the way I did it, but it's a bug. Make sure if you do one mirror and you're going to mirror it up, just delete the history first and then do the mirror up. Now let's change it to the Y direction. Okay, now it worked right. I just, I actually wanted it to break because uh, sometimes it breaks and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why it's buggy, but uh, basically what I just did though is I mirrored it to the left and then I mirrored it up. And so now we have um, all four. And so if I had done some modeling over here, uh, the modeling would continue over to these other sides. And that's, like I say, we're gonna use this a lot uh, because you don't wanna have to work on both sides. You just wanna work on one side if it's a symmetrical object. And that's it uh, for this this lesson. Just make sure you uh, you take this into note because I don't want you guys uh, doing double, triple, quadruple the work. Uh, make sure you use the mirror tool where it's appropriate and uh, and have fun. There's a lot of different tutorials out there that probably show like every single uh, thing in here. Like you can do flip UVs and smooth angle. I typically don't play with these, so that's why I didn't show them. But um, I would probably do the flip UVs, but the smooth angle, I just do the mesh display and I do it manually with the hardened and softened edges typically. So anyway, uh, happy modeling and have a great day.